Protesters won a huge victory after the North Dakota Access Pipeline halted construction. However, the corporation behind the pipeline plans on continuing construction, and so as a result, some of the lawmakers are already proposing legislation in the state that could take certain protections away from those who want to continue protesting. So there's a new bill, uh, a bill that state GOP representative Keith Kempinich introduced, and it would exempt drivers from liability if they accidentally hit a pedestrian. Now, he's been very honest about his intentions regarding this bill. He said that it does have to do with protesters, and he specifically wants to ensure that if protesters are blocking roads and drivers accidentally hit them, well, they don't have to worry about any liability there. Is that accidentally hit them or accidentally hit them? I mean, I think we know the answer to that. No, no, we, we, I think that it is, even the people who support him, I think will agree what the answer is. Because yep. he said that it, it's if they accidentally, quote, punch the accelerator rather than the brakes. Yeah. So that means not just like, hey, they came out of nowhere and I swerved and I hit the brakes, but I couldn't hit the brakes in time, and my God, I hit them, but they jumped out into the middle of the highway. You can understand that, right? And people would say, oh, okay, I can see that, but hey, you probably don't want to put that in a bill because that might then encourage some people to hit folks on the road, right? That's not this debate. He's saying, if you see him, you can hit the accelerator, and I'm going to let you get away with it. It's he's, encur he's literally encouraging them to run people over in the streets. I have a question about this legislation. Isn't it already legal that if you act like genuinely accidentally hit someone that shouldn't be on the road, like they've jumped in front of your car, isn't that already not a crime? Yeah, so that's a thing that uh, any normal prosecutor or police would come in and go, okay, let's look at the circumstances. Did you mean to run this person over or did you not run, mean to run them over? Oh, you right. didn't mean to run them over. Okay, well then I'm not going to charge you with murder. <laughs> that's not what happened right. here, right? It was an accident, etc. This bill says even if you kind of meant to and you hit the accelerator, you hit the gas yeah. and ran them over, I'm going to let you go because they're protesters. Because it's not like we live in America and protesting is in the first amendment of the United States Constitution. These guys are the ones that claim that they love the Constitution. They never even read it. So let me be clear about something. He is being honest about how the shift in um, like burden of proof would work, right? Because in a case where a driver hits a pedestrian or a protester in this case and kills them, well, the, there's a burden of proof there. Like the driver has to somehow prove that he or she didn't mean to do it, it was an accident. In this case, according to the lawmaker himself, here's what he has to say. It's shifting the burden of proof from the motor vehicle driver to the pedestrian. They're intentionally putting themselves in danger. So by protesting, you, using your First Amendment right to speak out against the government, he's saying, well, uh, you put yourself in danger, so I get to run you over, yeah. and I'm going to shift the burden onto you. Now, can, can you imagine if he said that about the Second Amendment? So if he said, hey, if you're holding a gun uh, and you're exercising your Second Amendment rights, I get to run you over in the street, and uh, the burden's on you. You were holding a gun. Even if you had a legal right to it and you had a license, now the burden's on you, and hey, everybody hit the gas pedal and run over everybody in the street that you see with a gun. What do you think would happen? Yeah. Everybody would go nuts. And by the way, those are guys with guns who could be a danger. The right. other guys are just protesting the government with their voices. I, I love that it's shifting the burden of proof onto pedestrians too, the ones that have just been hit. So they're probably like dead or injured. Or severely injured. And then it's know. up to them to mount a legal case. So that'll be it's, interesting. It's a way of intimidating people uh, from being politically active because you know that you don't have the law on your side. And then it's also a way of doing away with any type of dissent. So if there is a movement, you can be met with violence. And if something like this passes, it's justified violence under their legal system, right? Now, also, there are other laws that have been proposed. And by the way, I just want to say these are not laws that have passed. Like, this is just proposed legislation. Uh, one measure would make it a crime for adults to wear masks nearly across the board, while another would allow the state to sue the federal government over millions in extra police costs. So the first part of that I find super problematic. Well, I find both problematic. But the first part worries me because why would the protesters want to wear masks? I mean, think about what happened to a lot of the protesters uh, when it came to this pipeline. They were getting pepper sprayed. Even when they were completely peaceful, when they weren't an imminent threat to anyone whatsoever, they were getting pepper sprayed. So some of them would wear masks to protect themselves. So this is a way to 
get rid of that type of protection. To make sure they, they're not at all protected. And yeah. so when we pepper spray you in the face, you feel the full brunt of it. All of this is a direct, literal assault on your right to protest. So if you're a protester, they're saying we can run you over in the streets, we could pepper spray you in the face, and there's nothing that's going to protect you in the state of North Dakota. This is unbelievably sick. And so if you live in North Dakota, it doesn't matter, you don't have to agree with the folks who are protesting this particular thing. What if one day you want to protest to protect, again, your Second Amendment rights or any other thing, or you know, the taxation, anything you want to protest. Or you want to go to a masquerade and wear a mask, you can't do that anymore. Yes, or you know what, you're out there uh, hunting and you're in camouflage and you've got a mask on. Well, now we get to kill you if I, you know, or arrest you, arrest if you. Based, based on these laws. Finally, this is not theoretical. You know, part of the reason that, that uh, this guy proposed the law in the first place is a guy named Kyle Thompson, mm -hmm. who was a security guard, um, not security guard, let's be more clear. He worked for the private security firm Knightsbridge Risk Management for, for DAPL. So those are the guys building the pipeline. And he uh, was trying to agitate inside the protesters. And he was in his truck and he had a rifle with him, right? And when people try to stop him and say, hey, what are you doing here? Why, why do you have a weapon? We're against weapons. We're protesters mm -hmm. doing this peacefully and all we're doing is praying. Uh, he tried to run them over on the road. He mm -hmm. sped up. So now, don't worry. It's not like the state of North Dakota actually cares about the law. They let Kyle Thompson go. He, he then got out of his car, by the way, and pointed that loaded weapon at other people. They didn't arrest him. He's free to go. The guy who talked him out of shooting people, they now have an arrest warrant out for him. It is unbelievable. The North Dakota officials are basically have turned into the Pinkertons. Mm -hmm. Those are the private security that, that the corporations used to hire in the bad old days, where if you complained that your kid was injured in a mining accident, uh, they'd come over and break your legs and go, hey, complain again. Now, that's what the North Dakota government has turned into. They basically work for those oil companies. It's one thing for you to say, hey, I live in North Dakota, the oil boom helped me, I had a job, I have more money now. I get it, man, I understand that. It's another thing to turn your uh, government officials into unconstitutional agents of those corporations. Because if they come for the protesters and you don't do anything, when they come for you, there ain't going to be nobody left. <laughs> that is a enormous mangling of the original quote. Okay. That's a good point, but like, what I'm more worried about is the other way around. So you're talking about turning the government into paid agents of the corporations. I'm worried that the government is turning private citizens into paid agents or to agents of the government by basically out, outsourcing uh, their trying to break up the protest to private citizens. So rather than actually go through the process yeah. of lawfully trying to break this up and sending police, they're allowing private citizens to run down uh, protesters and to be in charge of intimidating protesters to try and break up the protest. So, Jade, that's such a great point, and I hadn't thought of it that way. And it affects two different things. One, it outsources state violence to private actors mm -hmm. so that an average guy who is a little unbalanced might go out there in his truck or. And they can just go, no, it wasn't me. It's yeah. That guy. Right. And then whether they actually are going to have your back is a whole different situation, by the way. And the second thing that it does is all those private security firms that the corporations are hiring, well now when they run people over in the streets, like those are almost literal Pinkertons, right? Mm -hmm. Well then they have immunity from the law. You can commit state violence on behalf of the state even if you're a private security for corporations. Look, it, uh, it doesn't matter if you're a liberal or conservative, libertarian or anything. Do not turn your government over to private interests. They're supposed to represent you. They're not supposed to represent multinational corporations. And that's what's happening in North Dakota. You can help build independent media. We're now doing fundraising to get four new investigative reporting teams out there and be the watchers on the wall. We're not going to let Trump get away with anything. We're not going to let the establishment get away with anything. You help us build it. TYTnetwork.com slash go. Be part of the solution.